drawing is my way of communicating what's going on in, in my head. Uh, here's a great takeaway for you. Research has illustrated that 90% of us do almost 100% of the drawings that we'll make in our lifetime before the age of 10. That's the threshold we pass when someone tells us that we aren't good at art or math or science. Drawing is about making memories. Here's me doing that on the beach in Ipanema, uh, inspired by the gestures of the landscape and the swirling sidewalks that are the visual language of Rio de Janeiro. Look carefully, those gestures even make their way onto a lexicon of symbols that adorn even the most mundane objects. Look on those trash cans, those little windy things. Hypnotized by this experience, my memory references and adopts this universally admired vocabulary and reinterprets it with little sketches, symbols, and signs, initials, buildings, squiggles, kisses, and stuff with secret meanings live on this design that we did for some wallpaper. I'm one of the 10% who didn't give up on expressing my creativity and invention through drawings. This sketch recalls the magic of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, which introduced me to the experience of seeing moving color images in 1968, pre-color television in the UK, and t today an impossible notion to conceive. Such formative experiences stay with me for a lifetime. I did a furry drawing of an imagined strip mall in Allentown while in graduate school at the University of Pennsylvania. It was a notorious drawing, not least for its texture, and it's still recalled by classmates a quarter of the century after the fact. I think now they've started to become more fond of it. Drawings tell stories like this one of a house in the woods, a place of healing, of encouragement, of hope and of healing. There are a hundred stories born from my imagination in this drawing. Castles and canopies, tree houses and trees poking through holes in the roof, stripes and squiggles. The drawing is deliberate and thoughtful. Here's the place from my imagination, ready to shelter and embrace the families welcomed by the Ronald McDonald House Charities, who understand that, with a little imagination and love, that things can be made better. Drawing he helps elevate the everyday and traumatic, and it's therapeutic. <sighs> this is the beginning of an idea. Is it a tree, a kit of parts, a construction toy? My curiosity in my sketchbook. That's my, uh, th this is what I do on Instagram. It's only a few lines, a bumpy floor, a little shadow, but even those few lines contain an important message. Drawings are a way for me to translate that awful idea to life, to create a place that changes perspective on life, or in this case, reassure a child and a parent that on the first day of school, we are embarking on a journey with a goal to instill a lifelong love of learning. That's drawing an impact and making it into a place and space for experiences. Drawing's a great way to see into the future and the past. Here's a town of little things that I built, things I've romanticized about, and things imagined. It's a very happy place. Look for the treehouse, a donut stand, a love nest in the clouds. I know of no better way to look at something than to draw it. Drawing helps you capture the feeling of really being there. This building lives in all of our pockets on the back of a nickel. But until you've been there and drawn it, you've never really looked at it. My memory of home, of, of Rome, Rome, is solidified and made permanent in this brisk sketch of St. Peter's. Even in, this, even in these squiggles, I see the apostles strolling along the parapet. The variety of fenestration. Every child of 10 has this drawing in them. What a tragedy that we suppress it and limit the sophistication of their observation. Why do we limit and not value this as a way to look at the world? In Verona, I'm sipping a lunchtime Prosecco on a wicker chair, admiring the checkerboard texture of the Piazza d'Erbe's granite floor. As a result of making this drawing, the memory is still vivid to me, and the lunchtime conversation with my wife and her sister can be triggered by looking through my sketchbook. From the same Italian trip, here's my favorite breakfast in Vicenda's Hotel Palladio, the morning we visited the Villa Rotonda. I like to draw food. My sketchbooks are full of tables and tablecloths, glasses of Campari, bot bottles of beer, and corners of croissants. Recently, cleaning out our daughter Emma's room, we made a miraculous architectural discovery a curated collection of lunch bags that I had drawn every morning for her. 
illustrative love notes from dad to daughter, part of our elementary and high school routine, a visual catalog of lunchroom memories. Here drawings are used to trigger the imagination or to make you giggle. Some of the drawings are sweet, but for the most part, they're very sophomoric reflections of topical interests of the day, farting, nose picking, and the like. I wondered whether Emma hid these drawings from friends at lunchtime, or if they collectively shared her opinion that her parental unit and his drawings ranked me as the coolest dad of all time. I like to think the latter. As you see, there are some repeated themes and frequently spectacularly witty drawings referencing the contents of the bag, off noting the nutritional excellence craved in adolescence. Or not. <laughs> I told eventually you were going to laugh at me. So whether I'm drawing Italy or from my imagination, drawing is a spectacular tool. Here's an amazing CSI worthy de decapitation illustration whose rediscovery made stuff come out my nose. So I love the range in this collection, um, silly or serious, something to build in imagination or with real materials, precise or less so. Drawings help us express our invention, communicate an idea, or preserve a memory. They are a universal means of storytelling, succinct, beautiful.